Hey everybody, it's Alex from Heavy New York. We are back at the Gramercy Theater, and today we are here with Alex of Crizzy, and thank you so much for your time, man. No, thank you for the interview, man. Yeah, it's so awesome to have you guys here. Your latest record is Scourge of the Enthroned, which came out on my birthday. Thank you for the awesome... Awesome, man. Congratulations. <laughs> but uh, how was the making of the record? Uh, it was pretty smooth, actually, you know. I mean, uh, uh, we went back to the Stage 1 studios, uh, which... Uh, uh, we already recorded a few albums out there. We had uh, Andy Klassen as a producer, so uh, we we know the guy. He already worked together, so uh, it was it was cool. It was smooth. Uh, a few issues here and there, but uh, everything went fine. You know, I mean, uh, yeah, we're happy with the result. Uh, it came out good, I think. Definitely came out good on this end. Now, um, being that you have so many albums out now, do you have like a formula that you always stick with, or do you like to experiment with each record? Well, we, it depends, man. Uh, it's a uh, kind of a natural thing for us, you know. I mean, uh, we we got together us three and start jamming, you know. I mean, we don't really follow a formula, you know. I mean, but we kind of follow like a. a somehow uh, you know a direction you know i mean for the latest one we're like uh we we wanted to to go faster you know i mean kind of kind of go back to the roots uh but we don't really follow a, a formula we we got together on the, on the practicing room start jamming and uh that's it pretty much you know i mean we wanted to go faster and more brutal than the previous one but it was it was a natural thing you know i mean we just got there and start jamming and, and that was it with the making of each record, does it get a little bit easier that you have so much, or has every record been like a new experience? It, it's actually a new experience, you know what I mean? Because we wanted to somehow um, keep developing what we do, you know what I mean? Uh, somehow we, we wanted to, to sound fresh, you know what I mean? If we think of uh, how many albums are, are coming out at the same time, and if we think of uh, how many bands out there, you know what I mean? So. We're definitely concerned with uh, with the result, you know. I mean, uh, we kind of uh, we got there, we start jamming. Sometimes we 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 build something, and uh, after all, we were like, no, nah, it's not gonna work. So we pretty much sometimes we dump some material, you know. What I mean, but uh, it's a, it's an easy thing for us. We we used to that, you know. I mean, we been jamming together for a long time, and then uh, it's not not really a problem for us. But sometimes things don't work. And then you gotta go further and, uh, and and try to build it up like something that might sound interesting. You know what I mean? Just led me into my favorite question. You're ever worried that the material you scrapped is gonna be on like a B-side record? It just be the biggest hit you guys ever had? <laughs> it could be. You never know, man. You never know. Uh, but uh, like I said, we we do like um, uh, we work on some on pre-productions. You know what I mean? So we listen to it and we're like, oh. Sometimes it don't work, you know. I mean, but you never know. Maybe sometimes you you're wasting something that could be mm, worth it, you know. I mean, but I don't know, man. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. yeah, I'm looking forward to that B side. All right, man. Maybe someday, yeah. We we got quite a few material that we we left behind, and then uh, you never know. Maybe someday or we can bring it up on an EP or something. Yeah, or if, you know, like, if it's really that bad, if, you know, Japan or Best Buy wants a bonus track, you're like, well, there you go. Yeah, there's yeah. your there's your bonus track. Yeah, they're always crazy for bonus tracks. You know? Yeah. Now, um, is there ever something in the songwriting process that comes first? Is there, like, a concept that your music follows, or do you just kind of, like, have to play around with riffs before lyrics come in? Yeah, we, we, we pretty much start up, uh, like, uh, out of a riff, you know what I mean? Like, uh, sometimes even the drummer can come up with a riff, you know what I mean? But mostly, I like, uh, Moises, the guitar player, will come up with a riff. Sometimes I would, sometimes Max, and then we put it together, you know what I mean? And then... Uh, we, we, we leave the, the vocals and the lyrics for after we got the song done. But sometimes we got the lyrics first, so it's not really a formula, you know what I mean? But we pretty much, like I said, we, we got together in the room and started jamming, you know what I mean? So, That's cool. Has there ever been a time where, like, lyrics, subject matter, determine the outcome of the music itself? Yeah, it does. Sometimes uh, I think about something and, and, uh, uh, and I tell the guys, hey, man, let's fucking get this going, you know what I mean? And... It might inspire us, you know what I mean, like a, a subject, you know what I mean, and it might inspire the, 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 the music itself, the instrumental, you know. Interesting. Mm. Interesting. Now, um, 
what I was curious about being that there's only three members of the band, right? And which is interesting for a death metal style band. Right. There's normally seven guitar players. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, does that maybe make it a little bit easier to kind of uh, being that there's only three members to kind of work together? Yes, it does, man. It does. Uh, I mean, uh, 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 we're not only a three piece. We're like three brothers, you know. I mean, so uh, we are like uh, we had the liberty to 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 tell. Um, you know, I mean, uh, whatever we think about it, you know, I mean, we we got we don't turn our backs and, and, and walk away of, of a problem, you know, I mean, so if we got an issue, we got to, you know, deal with it, you know, I mean, so uh, I guess it's it makes it easier, you know, I mean, being a three piece and being a being in, in a family, you know, I mean, it makes it easier, I guess. And if, if, correct me if I'm wrong. You haven't had really too many lineup changes, really. No, never, never had. Like uh, back in the day, like a long time ago, when when it first started, we had a second guitar player, but it didn't work. So we we kept the same lineup forever, you know. And that's cast. That's so rare nowadays. Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. Uh, I've seen bands like uh, having problems with lineups. It's a normal thing, you know. I mean, but yeah. fortunately, we never had it. You get to have a good laugh at that whole. Thing. Yeah, definitely. Like I say, we're, we're uh, uh, the fact that we're brothers. You know, I mean, we're like uh, we're not afraid of uh, tell each other what we think. You know, which is awesome. And uh, one other question I'd like to ask you is: I actually interviewed uh, two great uh, musicians from Brazil before. I interviewed Max Cavalera twice, and I also interviewed Angra recently okay. too. So, I heard that there's a great metal scene in Brazil. Do you concur? Uh, yeah, it's like everywhere pretty much, you know, I mean, there's tons of bands, you know, I mean, uh, uh, um, but the, the the scene itself is, uh, it's, it, I don't know, man, it's like everywhere, uh, the metal music, it's, uh, uh, I don't know, there's good bands, bad bands, good promoters, bad promoters, good venues, bad venues, so it's a, it's a tricky road, you know, I mean, but we survived through the years, and uh, like I say, it's good bands, uh, but it's a bunch of shit too. You know what I mean? Yeah. Being that Brazil is so big, is like Rio de Janeiro much different from São Paulo, which is different from Belo Horizonte. Is, does it depend also on the area of Brazil too? Where does that yeah, yeah. I usually tell people, you know, what I mean, um, Brazil is a uh, uh, great stuff out there. There's also bad stuff. I usually tell people if you want to go there, just make sure you don't go to the wrong places. You know what I mean? I think that's like that with anywhere. Yeah, yeah anywhere, but Brazil is, you know, it could be tricky. But uh, I like being in there. We we still living in there, and it's also a market for us, you know. When you're done with the tour here or either in Europe, we go back home, and we still like uh, having the, the the opportunity to keep playing, you know. I mean, so South America, not only Brazil but all South America, is also a market. So we keep things going. I heard like most of South America is just crazy. Like every band who I've interviewed, they say, "Oh, it's Argentina. That's a great yeah, tour." Yeah, or yeah, Brazil, yeah. and even not South America, but Mexico. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. they love it down there too. Do you think there's a specific reason that metal is so popular down there? Uh, I don't know. People are usually, you know, mean like uh, more passionate. I think you know, being about about music, not only metal but music, and uh, the crowds are. Uh, I think. Uh, they're a bit more savage, I think, you know, I mean, that makes it very interesting, you know, I mean, sometimes you, you're playing somewhere else for 10,000 for 10, people, 20,000 people, people standing there staring at you, you know, and then sometimes you're playing for a smaller crowd, like, let's say a couple hundred people, and they're fucking going nuts, you know what I mean, so that's the good thing about it. <laughs> shows in Brazil usually are like uh, uh, savage shows, you know what I mean. Yeah. Good shows. Very fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So before we go, I'd like to thank you so much for your time. Um, just, you know, you're finishing up this tour right now with Suffocation and uh, Cattle Decapitation. Awesome. Um, you know, Scourge of the Enthroned, it's a brand new record cycle. Could we be expecting to see Chris Ian on the road again soon? Uh, oh, yeah, man. We This is actually the, the, the first tour we're doing for the record, and we're loving this tour. Uh, we, we, we're having a great time being on the road with these bands. And I also got to mention uh, Visceral Disgorge. A good guys, good fucking band, and um, we're having a great time. And uh, right after this, we're going home. We were playing a few shows in Brazil, then uh, over to Europe for a full tour with uh, Septic Flash. Oh, wow. So we're kind of starting up like um, 
the tour and for the album. And uh, should be good. Yeah, Septic Flesh is coming here too with yeah, Ensafir, and we're excited. Good guys, good fucking band, man. Yeah, they played at this venue not too long ago, and uh, I thought that was almost the end of the venue. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. But thank you so much, thank Alex. You, Alex. Yeah. Thank you very much, man. Everybody, we are here with Alex of Crizzy, and be sure to pick up Scourge of the Enthroned if you haven't already, and catch them on their up-and-coming tour with Septic Flesh if you're in Europe. We'll see you next time on Heavy New York, everybody.